Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Pinkman solution. And uh, in today's video, we are going to discuss about command and control tool or AKA rat tool, which stands for remote administration tool. Uh, so what that means is you might have seen in movies where an um, attacker or an hacker is able to get hold of a remote machine or a victim machine and he can execute for commands for remotely who basically he can control and do the uh, do anything on the remote for machine without ever getting a f a physical access of that uh, machine now how that works and how that you can implement on your own in golang that's what we are going to discuss today and for this is going to be a, a multi-part series video uh, so i'll prepare this in uh, two three parts and uh, how that works and how the flow happens we are going to discuss today so as you can see uh, on the screen we have this diagram here uh, so the heading is command and control so as you can see we have a victim client on the le left so so this is the m machine actual machine where our commands are executed eventually and on the extreme right you have something called admin client so this admin client is for nothing but the attacker machine so this attacker machine uh, is the one from where the command originates and this victim client is where the, our commands are executed eventually and then in between we have something called c2 server so this uh, c2 server is command and control server so this uh, server is responsible for uh, taking command from admin and uh, passing it to the a victim and then a victim will go ahead and execute those uh, commands and send the result uh, back to admin client along the same path from victim to c2 and from c2 to admin now the way it works is uh, we have one server in between and two clients uh, now you might be thinking why we have two entities on the right uh, why can't we directly connect victim client to admin client now the answer is imagine we're doing this on a big scale and you have multiple clients over here on the left let's say you have three clients or for example three clients and all of those clients uh, are going to connect to the same server because we can't keep changing the ips uh, for the clients to connect to so the client software which we are going to build will have some ip hard coded or it will look at from somewhere ip or some dns name using that ip it's going to connect to a central c2 server now uh, we don't want our attacker to uh, always run a server continuously 24 7 in his laptop or machine so in place of that we have a, a c2 server in between so this uh, c2 server can be running on the cloud also or uh, remotely somewhere and then later admin can come and connect to this client uh, so sorry connect to this c2 server from his client or terminal and get hold of this uh, victims here so eventually ad, uh, admin client will send command to c2 server and then c2 server will pass those commands to clients and then client will execute the, them on their machine and pass the result back to c2 and from c2 admin client will be able to get hold of the output so in result in effect it will look like admin is executing or attacker is executing commands on the victim and the role of c2 server is uh, to continuously run for 24 7 serve the victim clients and admin uh, he can be anywhere in the world he don't have to worry about uh, running the c2 server it can be there on the cloud as well so admin from anywhere in the world can connect to this c2 server and control this clients so that is how the command flow will look like and if you see carefully we have uh, two apis here one api uh, for the communication between victim client and the c2 server and another admin api between the c2 server and the admin client uh, so we'll have two apis for these two entities admin and victim client now to implement this api we are going to use something called grpc 
सो आर पी सी स्टैंड फॉर रिमोट प्रोसीजर कॉल एंड जी आर पी सी इज वो गूगल्स इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ जी आर पी सी सो इफ़ यू डोंट नो अबाउट एनी थिंग अबाउट आर पी सी यू कैन वो कम टू दिस जी आर पी सी डॉट आई ओ वेबसाइट एंड रीड अबाउट इट यू कैन ऑल्सो सी दीज आर द सपोर्टेड लैंग्वेजेस बाई जी आर पी सी गो सी प्लस जावा पाइथन सी शाप एज यू कैन सी हेयर फ्रॉम द डेफिनेशन जी आर पी सी इज़ अ मॉडर्न ओपन सोर्स हाई high performance remote procedure called framework that can run in any environment and to implement this grpc in our project we are also going to use something called protocol buffers so protocol buffers are also a google product so protocol buffers are google language neutral platform neutral extensible mechanism for serializing structured voted data think of this way so when you send your uh, or data over the wire you need to uh, serialize it in some way so so protocol buffers are uh, uh, google's way of doing that in a much 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 efficient manner now protocol buffers combined with grpc works web, uh, uh, very well so that's what we are going to use uh if you see in rest api or traditional rest api we use a json so think of a json as protocol buffers and rest api as grpc so grpc is the alternative for rest api and protocol buffers are the alternative for json uh, payloads so the most complicated piece of entity here in this entire diagram is the c2 server because this c2 server is going to listen on two ports and it's going to serve both admin and the clients so being uh, and it's also going to have two api uh, or two api implementations one for the admin api and the embed api so once we implement this c2 server implementing the client will be a pretty straightforward so in this video what i'm going to do i'm just going to show you how you can implement uh, the grpc server uh, so starting today in this video we'll just uh, implement the proto file now proto files are nothing but uh, for grpc framework we give something called proto file in the proto file we define so what will be the interface between uh, these two entities so these two or for these two so what are the f f f functions which can be executed remotely by the client on the server so rpc so they are called rpc so we are just going to give the uh, a signature of those rpc so what will be the oh, parameters and the return values just that and the implement the actual implementation will be done in the uh, server code so which we are going to write so grpc is for nothing but a framework where we give the proto file of the interfaces of the rpcs and the grpc uh, framework will take that proto file and implement the uh, equivalent go c++ java or python code for the deserialization or serialization or networking stuff between the two parties and the interface definition structure definition all those things so will be taken care by the go frame uh, grpc framework we just have to give the proto file so to create the proto file uh, you can go ahead and we'll read this for what documentation here how to create a proto file but uh, let me just quickly go to the terminal and show you what it looks like so as you can see we are inside this c2 grpc uh, pro project uh, or directory if i do the tree command here you can see i have already created four folders here c2 grpc api client embed server so this is the proto file which i have created let me go ahead and open this okay so so this is the proto file which we'll use for the grpc framework to work in our way in our favor so we'll give this proto file to the proto compiler and it will generate the equivalent go code for this and then uh, we just have to implement these uh, rpcs in our server these three rpc methods we have to implement in our server and rest everything the networking stuff the the serialization and the deserialization and the structure definition all those things will be taken by the grpc framework so we'll see how that will work so let's go line by line 
so the first line is the host syntax so we are going to use for proto3 syntax so which is the latest one then the second line is we define the package now this is important so the same package name will be used for the uh, generated go file and we have two service definition here so it's clear from the diagram as well so we'll have two uh, services here two apis here for these two clients one is the embed and other one is the admin api so for them we have these two services and the messages exchange for between these three parties will be these only one is the message command and other is the empty message this empty message is for nothing but the our way of saying that it will be null i mean it will be null value so for null we are using something called empty message and in the command my message we'll have two fields one is the input field and other is the output field and this number would represent the uh, the position of this uh, fields so don't worry about this number just understand that the input uh, field will be on the first place and the output will, will be on the second place when this uh, message command is was serialized over the wire now let's go ahead and have a look at these two services embed service and the admin service if you see the embed uh, service we have two rpcs uh, mentioned here one is the get command rpc another is the send result rpc so the get command rpc will be called from a victim client onto the grpc server so it is a kind of a polling command so as soon as the victim client establishes a connection to the c2 server it will poll the c2 server ki, uh, hey c2 server do you have any command for me to execute and it will do that in a loop after few seconds after every few seconds so it will run this rpc continuously to get the command from c2 server and return it to the victim client so we'll pass empty message so because for this for doesn't need any oh, argument to get the command and it will return the command message and this command message will contain the input uh, field uh, filled up with the uh, command with the string uh, or command which we want to execute on the victim the other rpc is the send result now once the victim executes the command on his machine and it is for uh, ready to send the result back to the c2 server it will call this send result rpc and pass the command argument and now this command or message will contain the output field filled up with the standard output of the command executed here and it will pass it to the c2 server now c2 server will take this and pass it to the admin client so what is happening is the victim client is polling c2 server for any uh, command to execute I get that command in a string format, string form, executed locally and send the result back to the C2 server. Now let's look at the service of the admin service. Admin service has only one RPC called execute command. It will take the command as input as well as we will return the command as output. Now the first the parameter passed to this execute command RPC will contain the input field uh, filled up with the actual uh, command which you want to execute and the return value will also be the command message this message will have the output field filled up with the result received from this uh, send result from the victim client so that's how the flow will look like uh, you have seen the proto file now let's go ahead and use the proto c proto c is for nothing but proto compiler to generate the rest, uh, respective la language code as you can see here <coughs> the, these are the supported languages and we have few more so for uh, for generating uh, code for from proto file we need to install something called proto or proto buff compiler so for that what you can do is uh, if you are on windows or mac uh, operating system you can search on uh, google how to install a proto c or if you are in well, linux you can go ahead and install with this two, uh, either of the two commands if you are on ubuntu snap install or apt install uh, as you can see i went ahead with snap install protobuf and it was installed 
now uh, to generate the code i have to execute this command here so i'll go ahead and copy this paste it the so proto c hyphen i means uh, input a current directory then from current directory take the embed dot proto file and since we are uh, since we want to generate it in a golang we give hyphen hyphen go grpc output out and use the current directory for the output so it ran successfully ignore this warning right now if i do ls now you can see our go code is generated if you are curious you can go ahead and have a look at this go code but it will simply have the interface so which we defined in the proto file in uh, in golang form and then we will have some network related stuff and also we'll have a structure definition all those things see the same interface so which we defined here we have it here admin client embed client then we have some new network related stuff and then we have the function get command invoke so the, so the eventually this will invoke our implementation so this is just the layer so which will take care of the networking and the uh, serialization part of the messages exchange between the uh, server and the client so i'll just close this you don't have to f uh, worry about the code inside this so this is not meant to be uh, read or understood it's just uh, something generated from the grpc framework or the proto compiler so now that we have the code here in the next video we are going to write our uh, c2 server in the c2 server we are going to give implementation of this rpcs a get command rpc a send result rpc and the execute command rpc so we'll give the implementation of this in our server code and we'll also start the grpc servers in the uh, in the server code and that's it after that so we'll go ahead and code the clients so that's all for this video thanks for watching in the next video i'll see you with the server code until then take care and bye bye